Welcome back to another very special edition of Vikings Film Room brought to you by the Vikings Entertainment Network. Now, in our continuing coverage of Je Justin Jefferson's 2022 season, we found some plays that are so big, they couldn't fit on our other screen. We had to put them on the big screen behind me. Let's go through some of these and just see some of the best catches of the year for Justin Jefferson. Now, we talked about it earlier in Film Room, in case you had a chance to see it, about how much pre-snap alignment means. And in this case, you're going to see this affects the corner. You've got a lot of room at the top of your screen, this area here, because he's below the numbers, but it allows JJ to also get across the field more quickly. And on this play, you'll see the relationship between he and the safety. The safety feels him going across, he runs into the pick. Look at this throw way up over his head, but JJ's able to go up two hands, bring it down, and there it is, first down. So Cousins a little bit off, still made a great throw. Now, against Philadelphia, You'll see JJ's where he's in the slot one on one. And this, he is so good one on one in space against these inside defenders. And you're going to see this move that he just puts on. But you also have to notice the rest of the route, meaning you've got a receiver up the field here. You've got this tight end hooking up, staying in this area, and a running back over here. What does that do? That opens up this whole middle of the field. And that is where JJ can roam. This whole middle of the field is just wide open, throw catch, easy first down. Next play against Arizona. See JJ again in the slot, one on one. The corner is outside of him. This ball, he's in perfect position. The corner right here is inside, trying to take away this sideline right here. This is the classic 50 50 ball that you want to see Cousins throw to JJ all the time. You can't, you can't cover him any better than this. Safety over the top. Guy underneath, he still finds a way, not only to come up with the football, but then able to make some moves afterward and add some yards after the catch, all right? Later in the season, we saw corners trying to roll up and jam him at the line of scrimmage. Good luck with that. You'll see right here at the bottom of your screen, JJ, press. They're trying to jam him, but watch this move right at the beginning. Gets outside, and there it is. There's that underneath. This ball is thrown to the backside shoulder, Supposed to be a little short, a little bit underneath. You see JJ working himself back to the football and is able to make that catch. And luckily, they got him out of bounds. So even when he's covered on the sidelines, you still had that back shoulder option. All right, now we're getting down into the red zone. Again, corners rolled up. They're trying to slow him off the line of scrimmage. But watch this move inside. Again, that corner is on the outside shoulder. So if we go back to the beginning, you'll see this relationship that this guy has. He lines up outside to begin with, but then right before the snap, he's gonna jump inside and try to jam him, roll him up, and what he's trying to take away is this section of the field right here. He has a safety sitting right there in case JJ breaks toward the post, making him run and bend this thing, banana this thing to the corner. So you've got two defenders on him. They're running the exact route that they expect. Cousins puts this ball up, contested JJ, still over the shoulder, catch and touchdown. You can't stop it. It's impossible to stop. All right, the Buffalo Bills. Remember we heard about this after the Detroit game. You just gotta roll up on jam, jam them, have a safety over the top. Well, that works sometimes, but not all the time. Again, JJ beating him off the line of scrimmage, but he bends that thing in. So if we go back to the beginning, this corner doesn't know right off the top whether or not he's running the go route or if he's going to bend this thing in. And what that does is pull this safety back. Keeps that safety from being able to jump inside on him. You got the clear, the underneath, grab, throw, catch, breaks a tackle, and is still able to get positive yards after that. So JJ, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, you can't cover them all three, inside, outside, and over the top, all right? Another situation, middle open, JJ, one-on-one -on -one with the corner, top of your screen, the little pause, and it's the start and stop that allows you to get distance. It's not necessarily just pure speed or else the fastest guys in the world would be the best wide receivers. It's the ability to start and stop. Look at this, right over the shoulder, right over the corner. He wasn't even open. He's just able to take that thing off the back shoulder and score the touchdown. All right, so you're gonna start press bailing a little bit, right? As JJ comes off the ball, right about here, is where that corner opens his hips. And the corner is opening his hips because JJ may go vertically. But as soon as those hips open, Justin Jefferson knows 
that he can now plant his foot and get to the sideline. So it's that exact second. It's to be able to press that safety or that corner to get him to open up, and now he can work himself to the sideline. Cousins sees that and puts that football right there in the sideline when he's breaking out. Now we should all remember this play. This is the big one. This is the fourth and 18, the catch of the year. Just everybody has seen it. But watch this route. This route is very interesting. It's a three level route. And basically what you're gonna get is you're gonna get a short receiver somewhere here in the flat, a second receiver working his way outside at the mid level. And then you're gonna get Justin Jefferson to get deep, to get this safety to turn, and then he's gonna work himself out. And then it's where Cousins is gonna throw the football. So this is a three level effect to the outside. JJ's in the middle, works himself up the field, stabs inside, keeps his concentration. This ball is thrown kind of over his head, but he fades back, gets that arm up, makes that catch. And now that I've seen it, it kind of reminds me of a play, oh, I don't know, a few years ago that looked almost exactly like this. Case on a deep drop, steps up in the pocket. He'll fire to the right side, caught by Diggs. Stay oh, my God, oh my God, oh my God, no Kay. touchdown! Are you kidding me? It's a Minneapolis miracle! Stephon Diggs and the Minnesota Vikings have walked up on the New Orleans Saints. It's a 61-yard Minneapolis miracle. Let's go back to January 15th, 2018. The Minneapolis Miracle. And the similarities are absolutely uncanny in this situation. Again, three receivers down here at the bottom, just like in the play in Buffalo. Quarterback in a shotgun, back offset to his left. In fact, just like Dalvin Cook does against Von Miller in the Buffalo game, the running back comes out and chips the end. Exact same thing. And then after the ball is snapped, you're gonna see really the exact same route. You'll have three receivers out to the strong side. One guy where? Shallow in the flat. You'll have another guy mid working to the sideline. And finally, you have Stefan Diggs deep into the corner. This is the magic spot. And ironically for Stefan Diggs, he was there to catch this one, but he was also there to see Justin Jefferson catch this exact same route and move the chains in a almost miracle regular season game. So lightning does strike twice in the same place. All right, red zone, corner, out in space, covering JJ, good luck with that. You have help on the inside of the field, so you're probably gonna wanna play outside shoulder. But again, there's that stab, he's getting inside. If you go back to the beginning, you can understand what this corner is thinking. He's thinking, I've got this space outside over here that I have to defend because I have no help. He does have help right here with that middle safety and maybe with a linebacker. So you wanna force JJ back into the middle of the field, but you give him too much space. He can't close fast enough. You know, he gets there at the late arm over his other arm, but JJ still able to come up with that football and almost score a touchdown. So a great contested catch when things don't always work out exactly the right way. All right, next play again against Buffalo. You see the reduced formation again, every receiver on this screen is inside the numbers. And that gives defenses headaches because it opens up the sideline and it allows for easier crossing routes. But in this case, JJ's up on top, little stutter move. And then earlier on in film room, we saw him from that point, work himself back toward the middle of the field. But in this case, he's gonna work to the corner. And this is perfectly defended. You have a corner inside underneath him, Safety over the top getting there. And when this ball arrives, you've got two defenders right on him, but JJ's still able to focus on the ball, create some separation, and come down with the catch. Unbelievable, all right? New England Patriots playing off a little bit. Looks like a middle open. We'll see what we get. Again, there's that corner opening up his hips. If you go back to the beginning, it's JJ on this route, working his way up the field, but he stabs just a little bit outside and then wheels it up the field. And all that does is get that corner to turn his hips and settle, and then he can't run. So he gets up vertically. There's that little stab toward the middle, feels that corner settle, works his way upfield, and what a great throw to get it between, again, the corner and the safety. Not a lot of room there, perfect throw. JJ was able to keep his eye on the ball, come up with a big catch. 
There's just two guys on him and you're still making these completions. It's just, for a defense, that's just an absolute nightmare. All right, next play. It looks like man-to-man, -man, single high safety. Defenders are staggered so they don't get picked at the line of scrimmage. JJ again with that little stutter. Now, for defenses, this is a danger point. Meaning, when JJ gets to this spot, we don't know if he's going to bend himself out that way or work across, all right? But this little pick route that you have right here, it's a deep down the field sort of a pick where you have Adam Thielen working his way across the field and JJ working his way underneath it creates traffic for that defensive back. He's right in his waist when JJ catches that football. So great job by the defender, but it still didn't stop it. And finally, another one of my favorite catches from JJ all year. Remember, after that first Detroit game, it was all about jamming him at the line of scrimmage and keeping a safety over the top. Let's see how they do on this one. Tried to get the quick jam. You see the nickel defender step up, but he kind of misses. JJ's able to get up the field. Now, when he gets to this point, there are a couple things that we have to notice. Number one is Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins is getting smacked in the face, and he's just starting to throw this football when, in reality, you've got one Detroit defender there on the outside, one on the inside, and then you have this guy over the top working his way over. Three defenders working their way to Justin Jefferson, but watch what he does with this route. JJ takes and bends this thing in to the underneath defender and then opens up last second to make this catch. There he is, body contact, pivot, open. You know, and did he step out of bounds here? I don't know, I still think this might have been the best touchdown that Justin Jefferson had all year. So overall, even when defenses get it right, even when they try to combo him and they get two guys on him, it still doesn't mean he's not gonna make the catch. With Cousins putting the ball anywhere near the old 50-50 football, JJ has a way of coming up with it. It's the most incredible thing I've seen in quite some time.